everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me. Now today we're going to be looking at a kind of new technique for die cutting that I think I've developed enough for everybody to use with whatever die cutting machine they're using, dies, cardstock and plates. So I will run through the entire list for you in a moment of supplies that you're going to need. Hopefully all things that crafters will have already, but we're going to be creating some fantastic partial die cutting apertures or windows with your average ordinary kind of cut all the way around the outline dies. Now I've got a beautiful snowflake from a textures uh, snow flurry range. I've got my remarkable mandalas panel as well. Again from textures you'll find everything linked down below. This one is kind of already that sort of partial die cutting window but I'd like to cut uh, a smaller area out from it instead and have the solid outline so I'll show you how to do that. And then I've also got these leaves from my uh, Paper Craft Society box that I've taken and these make a beautiful autumnal or fall kind of window. Quick disclaimer, uh, we are going to be putting different shims, different materials into our die cutting machine. So, so just so you know, uh, I hold no responsibility for any damage to your machine if you're trying to put too much pressure through. Uh, the biggest warning is if you're struggling to turn the handle on your die cutting machine, you've got too much pressure in there, don't run it through, take it out and revise your plates and your shims. But I will run through all these instructions and advice as we go through the tutorial. Now I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot, so if you're using the same machine, you should be able to get very accurate results. If you're using another machine, there is a theory that you can use and hopefully you can work it out yourself. Let us know in the comments if you've got a different machine, different plate combination that works well for you. Now besides your die cutting plates, you're also going to be needing some of the old fashioned stamping acrylic blocks. Lots of us have these at home, they come in different thicknesses, different sizes. These are going to determine kind of your window, your aperture in your card um, and we need to just work around the thickness of each to get the plate combination right. So grab yourself any of those that you've got laying around. Then of course you're going to need some cardstock to cut into and here's the fun bit. Then you're going to need your different shims. This is going to vary depending on the size of the acrylic block or rather the thickness of the, the acrylic block that you are using. So just some things that I've got to help me. I've got uh, a self-healing mat. This is A5 so it fits in with my plate combination. I've got two different thicknesses of rubber mats. You can also use things like stencil mylar plastic, uh, any cardboard you've got at home as well. Get those Amazon boxes and keep those, cut those up to fit in your plate combination. Um, magnetic sheets as well that you get with machines, things like that. Also your storage magnetic sheets, they work well. Essentially you can always pack out with just some cardstock and paper. Now each time you do this you're going to find you need a different plate combination. Again, like I say, depending on your acrylic block, it's well worth when you work yours out that you jot down your plate combination, what you've put inside to shim your plates and then keep that aside for future use. So I'm going to be working with this acrylic block. This is the thickest of all of mine and what I've actually found which is helpful is the block is the same thickness as the thick block um, that comes with your die cutting machine. So the first thing I'm going to do immediately is omit that, take that out of my sandwich. So I'm just left with my two clear plates, this kind of thinner plate um, that's always in uh, Sizzix plate combination. So I've got those three at the moment. Now, what I then do is I just run it through, first of all, taking the one plate out that is as similar as the acrylic block and see what happens there. If it's too much, you can't get it through, come back, you're going to have to remove some more plates. This would be my next option. If it runs through and you've actually got no pressure at all, then you're going to want to start adding shims in. This is going to be trial and error, but the results are fabulous. So for this acrylic block, I have worked out I need a clear plate. I then need my rubber self-healing mat that's because this is a little bit thicker than this one and I needed a little bit of extra thickness so I took my, my turquoise one out and I put that one in instead. What I also did is just added in an additional very thin shim and that was a thin black rubber mat. Now to prevent any tearing on this I put this underneath between two plates just there. Okay, so I've got those three. Then I've got my acrylic block, my stamping block, and I'm going to consider now whereabouts on my cardstock. I always cut it to the same size as my plates so that I've got room to trim around if I need. 
Um, but whereabouts are you going to want this? If you're making this into a panel where you've got an aperture in the top corner, make sure you pop it in the top corner, but don't forget it will be reversed. So uh, yeah, in the top left, top right, whatever. I'm just going to go for the center for ease today so I can show you the technique. Then I'm going to put my dies on. So I'm going to overlap my acrylic block like so, I think that's quite pretty. Pop my cardstock on top and then my glass clear plate. So just to recap, for my acrylic block, I have got a clear plate, I've got a thin rubber mat, I've got a self-healing cutting mat, my acrylic block, my dye, my paper or cardstock and then my other clear plate on top. So you can see it can get quite uh, complicated but honestly, it's so worth it. Like I say, when you work out for each of your acrylic blocks, the combination that you need to get the correct thickness, then you are just going to use that thickness for the same acrylic block every time you run a die through. So now the first part is really easy because the acrylic block's not there and then you'll start to feel where you're going over the acrylic block and that should feel the same pressure as any normal cutting die. You don't want to add additional pressure. I'm just lifting off my plate and checking that everything has cut through beautifully, which it has. And when I say cut through, what you'll notice straight away is the edges haven't cut, but you do have a nice outline where your acrylic block is. So now onto the next stage quickly. Now the next bit is to actually remove the outer lines. So metal ruler, craft knife. If you are working with an acrylic block, if you're lucky enough to have some that are circular shape or just different shapes, and you, you know, you've got curves, obviously you're not going to use a ruler, you're going to have to cut those uh, freehand. It's a really good idea though to cut from the inside so that you can see the pattern you're cutting around. So what you're going to want to do is trim around your die cut. Once you've cut around all the outlines, you can release the bit in the middle. So uh, I won't lie, this is a really complex image. This snowflake is so detailed. I had to go around lots of little bits around the edge, getting in between all the fronds of the snowflake. Um, so definitely probably start off with easier images as you're starting to learn this technique. Um, but it's still, it's going to look absolutely beautiful and well worth the time doing. So just releasing all the inner pieces here. Obviously, be really careful. The last thing you want to do then is tear some of the detail in your die, but it should release the same way as any other die cut. There we go. Just take this bit out and this bit. You might find you need to use your craft knife just to uh, help cut through some little bits at the edges. Occasionally, the edges don't always cut uh, as far as you'd like them to, but by like a millimetre, so just a little snip or nick with your craft knife will release them. Let's just pop the pieces out of here so you can see the effect. Probably best not do this with your craft knife, use your pokey tool for this. But you can see the result that you're getting. There we go, how beautiful is that? Now simply pop a piece of coloured or patterned paper behind that and with a quick sentiment, how beautiful is that? So let's move on to the next one and that's going to be those gorgeous leaves. So this time I'm going to use another acrylic block but as you'll see, it is slimmer than the first one. So I'm going to have to adjust that plate combination again. And I like to show you this process so that you can see what you, what you may come across um, and what you can and can't do. So again, because of the thickness of this, I know that there's no way I'm going to be able to put my thick white base plate through. So that automatically comes out. Now, because this is thinner than the last one, I can't go straight in with the same combination as I did last time because I know that that's just not going to be enough. Once you've sorted one of your plate combinations out with one of your acrylic blocks, it's quite easy to then work out the next ones just by putting the two together and looking at the height difference. So I've got, it's really hard for you to see this on camera, but I've got around about three or four millimeters there in difference. So I need to add three or four millimeters to the previous uh, plate combination. So I'm going to do this with the aqua colored plastic plate and a thicker rubber mat. Now I think that's going to be around about the right thickness. So I'm going to put these two in as well. 
Then I'm going to put my acrylic block on. Now this one does have a grid line on it. It doesn't make any difference really, but I tend to keep that away from my paper just in case there's any transfer. There, ever, there isn't because that's the bit you're actually cutting out, but I'm thinking more about the elements where my dies are left. So I'm just going to put the plain side down and then I'm going to start arranging my leaves on here, obviously overlapping the edges with each of them as well. And of course, if you want to, you can tape these down. In fact, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm just positioning my dies on my paper and I've got my acrylic block here so that I can really gauge um, whereabouts they're going to cut. So I think that will be, that will be nice. I think something like that. Okay, happy with those. Take that away and then tape these down. So I can see my three leaves have cut beautifully and in fact do you know what even if you wanted to leave it like that maybe just pop the insides of the leaves out that would still make a beautiful card base but I'm now going to take my ruler and my craft knife and just cut out that rectangle again you can clearly see the rectangle there because the acrylic block has kind of embedded that outline for you. There we go, and another ink blended background behind that, and it's going to look beautiful. There, a quick sentiment over that, and you've got yourself a beautiful panel again. Now, let's look at that mandala. Now, as I mentioned, I have got an acrylic block that is much, much thinner. So for this one, I'm actually going to leave my big, uh, thick white plate, the base plate in. Then I'm going to put, I've already worked this out, so um, I'm going to put the uh, plastic one in, the shim in there. Then it's going to be the block, then my die, then my cardstock, and then just the clear plate on top. That's plenty of pressure. But because I don't want this moving around, I am going to be putting my uh, tape on. So my die down, my acrylic block on top exactly where I'd like it. Now I could do this horizontally or vertically. I always think with any die cutting machine, if you can run anything through uh, vertically, so long ways, you do get a better cut. So just taping this down to the die, and this is just going to help keep everything still as it's running through. There, I can see I've got that beautiful cut again. So gently lifting this off, I'm going to pop all the pieces out I'm then going to cut my square around there and this one I'm going to make into a shaker card. So they're using my old stamping acrylic blocks. I've managed to turn my ordinary dies into panel dies, aperture dies and I'm stretching my stash even more. If you like videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel. Everything that I've used today can be found available at Craft Stash just here. And I think you're really going to love this video on my channel just here. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Take care. I'll see you again very soon.